Are you guys getting tired of this yet? Because I'm sure as hell not. To Hogwarts it is. This time it's our fourth year and boy oh boy is it different. It feels like the formula they used in the first three games has been dropped altogether, because well, mostly, it has. The open world connecting all the classrooms and locations has been removed and replaced by a level select screen. Is that bad? Well it's a bit sad, because walking around the castle finding secrets is what I loved about these games to begin with, but then again. The games seem to scale with their audience. The first couple of games were more mysterious adventure type games, while this game moves more towards an action type game. Even the camera perspective tells this too. Instead of a low angle looking at the world with your characters, you now look from more of a top perspective, seeing more of the world around you to react to it in a more strategic way, and so the game can throw more enemies at you at once, since that's the new style here. The levels themselves are also way less open world and more corridors often being mostly just a straight path to the end with just a couple of short side paths. The only real exception here being Hogwarts exterior, which as a result is also the largest and most well designed in my opinion. More action less adventures also felt in the story, which is taken even more of a backseat compared to the last game. While you would have difficulty understanding the story in Azkaban if you didn't know it already, this game, it would be downright impossible to understand. You get a short cutscene after each level. They look cool and I liked the art style they give you, but they have no information in it whatsoever. Like in the Prisoner of Azkaban, you can play as Ron, Harry and Hermione. This time though, at the start of each level you choose which character you want to play as, and you can even customize the characters individually with three wizard cards. Some give you extra health or increase the power of your jinxes, or make you more effective against a certain type of enemy. There is endless combinations and possibilities with just three slots per character. You can also play a multiplayer with every person controlling one character, but since I have no friends... Moving on. If you're like me playing this game all alone, you'll have to trust the AI does its job, because sometimes you need to cast a spell with two or even three people at the same time. And sometimes the AI doesn't quite feel like helping you out. Yeah, please fix that, thank you. Anyway. If you know the story being told here, which you should otherwise every cutscene in this game is just a bunch of nonsense to you, you're probably wondering what the three tasks in the tournament will be like. Well, of course these are levels and being honest here for a quick second, they're pretty good. Both the dragon and the lake follow a similar pattern while still feeling different, while the maze is mostly just that, a maze. It's mostly a normal level with an ending having a chase sequence. What's chasing you? The maze itself. I didn't write this, right? You can't blame me for this one. Between the tasks, you need to collect shields to move on to other levels. Going from the first to the second task isn't that bad. There is even a couple of extra levels thrown in to help you collect shields. But then going from the second to the third task, you need to get over 10 shields. Which sounds like more of a task than it is, actually, because it's only going to take you about half an hour. This is just downward artificial stretching of your game. Fine, put in those shields, but don't force me to go get them. If your game is good enough, I'll want to collect them because it's fun, not because I have to. Talking about stretching the game, you think another half an hour might not be that much in the grand scheme of things, but this game in total is only about 3 hours long, so stretching it just that little bit is a pretty significant portion of the whole game. I'm just happy that between the maze and the fight with Voldemort you don't need to get any extra shields. That wouldn't make any sense from a story perspective. Then again, you would hardly notice the way this game tells its story to you. Talking about the Voldemort fight actually, it's bad. Like honestly, probably the worst part of the game. You first have to fight a bunch of skeletons and then he throws a statue at you while you have the one struggling which makes it hard to dodge. Then when the statue gets stuck on the ground you need to make sure the beams from your magical one struggling thing hit it and break it piece by piece. Also, the magical spell one beam thing can get stuck at any point, so that means you're pretty much fucked and doomed to die, at which point you start from the skeletons all over again, and it takes an annoyingly long time 
So get rid of those again. To end this video on a positive note though, the game has vastly improved graphics over the last one, allowing it to have even more things happen at the screen at any given time. I would imagine that getting rid of the overworld has something to do with this upgrade, which is why I don't mind it too much. This game also has the darkest feeling out of any of the games so far, which I can appreciate a lot, since this is where the series as a whole took a darker turn, with the return of Lord Voldemort and Harry starting to mature. It's difficult to compare this game to the three that came before, just because it's so different. But actually, I think I like this one quite a bit more.